I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about software processes, the things we do when we're developing software systems. Now a software process is a structured set of activities that covers all aspects of software development from the early requirements for that system through development to deployment, evolution after the system has gone into use and finally decommissioning of that system. There are many different formal software processes but as I'll discuss in a separate video there are four fundamental activities which we see in all of these processes sometimes in different forms. These activities are specification, setting out what the software should do, design, organising the structure of the software, implementation and testing, developing the programmes making up the software system and testing that these are free of bugs and meet the requirements, and evolution, changing the system after it's gone into use. Plan-based or plan-driven processes are processes where all of the activities in a process are specified in advance. A project plan is created and progress is measured against this plan. Agile processes don't have a detailed project plan, but rather they develop this, the, the software in a series of increments with the functionality of each increment dependent on overall progress in the development. It's easier in an agile process to change the software if the requirements are changed, simply because everything is not fixed and static at the beginning of the process. What we find in practice is that most software is developed according to a mix of plan-driven and agile processes. And I'll come back to this and discuss the kinds of process that are most appropriate for different kinds of software. Now the original, the best known and still widely used plan-based process is called a waterfall process and this came from a standard engineering process which had been used across the engineering industry for many many years. It was introduced around about 1970 and it breaks the software development into a series of phases. These phases are requirements analysis and definition, system and software design, implementation and unit testing, system integration and overall system testing, and operation and maintenance. The problem with the waterfall process is that it's a document driven process so there's an output from each of these phases in the process so if change happens at a later phase it requires quite a lot of work to modify the documents earlier in the process and this often means that we freeze the software we avoid making changes even if these changes would be to the benefit of the company or organization buying the software. What we find is that the waterfall model is really only suitable when the requirements are well known so we're not going to have a lot of uh, change in that system and this is not typical of most business systems. Most business systems change very quickly indeed. It's more true of critical systems where it's very important that requirements are developed and analysed in detail to ensure that the software is safe or secure. The other area where the, the waterfall process is widely used is in systems engineering where there are multiple teams developing different parts of the system. There it's very difficult to organise an informal coordination so the document driven process is used to coordinate the work. But even there, there are often elements of agile development involved. Agile methods are an incremental or iterative approach to development based on a series of iterations, which are typically two to four weeks, each of which 
develops some discrete units of system functionality. The aim in Agile is to minimise documentation and communication overhead, to focus simply on developing the operational, the working programme. It's an approach that is generally much more responsive to change and has the goal of de delivering useful functionality to users more quickly than is the norm when a waterfall process is used. In Agile development, we still have the activities of specification, design, implementation, but instead of happening in a, a, a sequence, these are interleaved activities. We do a little bit of specification, a little bit of design, a little bit of implementation, and then go around and repeat that process again and again. So that's the, the characteristic of iterative or incremental development processes, which is that the fundamental activities, or at least the fundamental development activities, are interleaved. The benefits of Agile is it's often cheaper to accommodate customer requirements change because the requirements don't all have to be specified in advance. As an understanding of the system develops, new requirements frequently emerge. It's generally easier to get feedback from the customer while the system is being developed because the aim in Agile is always to have a workable version of the system so that the, the customer can see what's going on and can check that it's what they want. And in some cases, it's possible to combine incremental development with incremental deployment where the customer gets an interim version or versions of the system so they can get useful functionality delivered to their business earlier than would be possible with a phased approach to software development. The problem with Agile is the, the lack of visibility. Because documents are avoided, it's often difficult to actually know how, pro, how the system is actually progressing. It's also difficult to coordinate activities across different teams. And the other problem is a typical problem of change, which is that the system structure tends to degrade as it's changed. We, the, the, the changes actually tend to kind of mess things up a bit. And active work has to be done, and this is called refactoring, to try and improve that system structure to avoid that degradation. The final process that I want to talk about here, or the final generic process I want to talk about, is a process based on integration and reuse. Over the last 15 or so years, we've seen a huge change in the way software is developed, where there is much more reuse of existing software rather than developing software from scratch. So an approach to development is to actually find existing software or existing software systems or components, integrate these into a system and use that system. The reuse components often have to be changed or configured so that they suit the particular functionality needed by the customer. I'll discuss software reuse in more detail in a later series of videos, but really there are several kinds of reusable software. There are reusable application systems, which are configured to meet the needs of a user. There are reusable components, which are combined with other reusable components and some specially written code to create a system. And there are web services, which you can think of really as external components. They're services you can access and invoke over the web that deliver helpful and useful functionality. There are five fundamental reuse-based process activities. There's a requirement specification activity where we try and understand what the system has to do. There's a software discovery and evaluation activity where we go and look for reusable software and evaluate if that meets the needs of the customer. There's then a repetition of the requirements activity. We go back to the customer and often modify the requirements because the reusable software does not exactly do what's required or what's initially required. There's then a configuration process where the software that is being reused is adapted to make it work in this context. 
and there's component adaptation and integration. Sometimes source code of components have to be changed to make them work in the new system that's being developed. A reuse based approach involves a mix of plan based and agile approaches. It's plan based because we really do try and get requirements in advance, but it's agile in the sense that things are changed, systems can be reconfigured as the software is developed. And it's very common to develop and deliver the software incrementally. And this is very typical of all real software processes. There's not a hard line between plan-based and agile processes. But if we look at different kinds of software, critical systems, such as safety critical systems, need to have a very detailed analysis of the requirements. So we need an upfront requirement specification. We need documents to ensure that the work has been done properly and we can demonstrate that the system is safe. So these are usually developed using a plan-based process. Software products, off-the-shelf products, are now almost universally developed using an agile process. This is particularly suitable for this type of product because the specification is quite flexible. It's not The specification is not coming from an external company, it's coming from the company that's developing the products themselves. And when we get business systems, we get a mixture of these. Business systems often need an agile approach but have elements of plan-based because certain requirements are fundamental to these systems and it also may well be that the management processes in a company require some documentation to be produced. In my next video, I'm going to talk about these process activities in a little bit more detail.